Hey there everyone, my name is Manjunath and in this video we are going to build just Hello World project using Node.js. This will be a backend project, strictly backend project because we are going to build one API endpoint using Express.js, Node.js as well as MongoDB. So if you are interested to build any kind of backend, this is the best video you can watch and uh, I would recommend you to watch entire series so that you will understand how to build backend API using Node.js and MongoDB. So without delay, let's get started. We need to install few things in order to build backend using Node.js. So first thing is we need to have Node.js itself installed. If you have it already installed, then no problem. You can use whatever the version you are using. But if you are not having it, then just go to nodejs.org and download the LTS version, whichever the LTS available, that time just download that particular version. Then I'll be using Visual Studio Code in this particular thing. It's a free editor by Microsoft. So you just have to go to code.visualstudio.com and you need to install it. Just click next, next, next. It's not a big uh, difficult to install this particular editor. And then we need to use MongoDB. So we'll be using cloud database. So just go to mongodb.com and click on sign in or try for free and create account. We'll be seeing how to use it in upcoming videos. But at the moment, just go ahead and just sign in using MongoDB database. And now we need to create one project folder always remember whenever you are like starting with any kind of coding project you need to create a project folder so it might be any kind of directory in your uh, computer just go ahead and create one folder and inside that we are going to create a project folder we are going to name it as a node.js website or we'll call it as my node.js website you can name it whatever the name you want to name it's usually the project name but i'll keep it as my node.js website and now we need to open it in visual studio code opening it in visual studio code is very easy you just have to right click if you are using windows 10 then you will get it in this menu only if you are using windows 11 just like how i am using you just have to click on show more and open with the code it is going to open up one project folder in Visual Studio Code. Then we need to open up integrated terminal. So you can click on this particular thing and you can click new terminal. It will open up one terminal in this particular panel. So now we need to type some of the Node.js command. Just let's just make sure whether Node.js is installed or not properly. Just type node dash dash version. It is going to print whatever the version which is installed in my system. In yours, it might show whatever the Node.js version is installed. That may be 16.17 or maybe 19. Whichever the LTS version you have downloaded, just you will see that particular version number printed here. Then we need to see whether another package is also installed. npm dash dash version. It's going to print whatever the version npm is having. Just like how we have installed node with this particular package, it will install npm also. So you don't have to install it by downloading it somewhere else. So it will just print whatever the version it needs to have. In our project, there is no such requirement that it needs to be specifically this version only. Use latest version, that would be best. So once that is done, we need to create one Node.js project. Yes, I know we have created one folder that is my Node.js website, but our Node.js project doesn't know that this is our Node.js project. So in order to create one Node.js project, you just have to type npm, npm init. And it's going to ask us few questions. Just answer it. Project name, it's fine. Whatever the name they have mentioned inside bracket. If I just click enter, it will put default name. So for everything, let's just click next, next, next. You can fill it up and uh, enter. So it's going to create us one file called package.json. And in this file, we are going to not do pretty much anything because whatever we have to do, it can be done directly using uh, uh, command line itself. So without any delay, let's just uh, install one package. 
as video mentioned we are going to use express so we need to install express if you just type npm i express it's going to install express in our project and we'll get to know that it's installed by seeing here that dependencies it will have it as express so once that's done we can close this fold file and we'll create one new file we'll name it as server.js so if you're familiar with javascript it's exactly same file that is .js if you are not familiar with javascript still it's fine you can follow along with the tutorial but you might not uh, understand certain things like creating variables and all but if you are familiar with programming you'll follow uh, along this particular uh, tutorial fine so let me just create one variable that is one constant variable we are going to create we'll name it as express and we are going to set it to whatever the file which we have imported that is express meaning which whichever the file which we have installed right now we are going to import that particular thing into express and we have to now create our app using which we can uh, get all kind of connections and uh, we can start our server that is node.js server will set this particular app to this particular express by running if we type this bracket that means we are actually running that particular express function and we are going to use whatever that function is whatever the function which ran using this particular app variable so without any delay let's just uh, create one server quickly so app dot listen is going to make uh, us listen on certain port so usually we are going to listen on port 3000 by going to website we can go to localhost colon 3000 then we'll be able to use our application that's pretty much standard in any kind of web development if you have done it before if you haven't done any web development then it's fine you are going to need this particular uh, port using which we can access this particular project so we can just print console dot log and we can just say server started on port 3000 and we'll just save it just doing this much uh, thing is not going to allow us access the website in order to that we have to create one route we can create route by same way app dot get and we can type slash that's the main route that is the index route and we can just uh, create one function here with request and response we'll talk about it after a while but uh, this is just hello world project so let me just type some things and we are going to send a result that uh, which we are going to display on the website and we are going to say it uh, res dot send and we are just going to say hello world so request is something which from website it will come to the server res is something which we are going to send from server to the website so if it just say res dot send hello world then it's going to send hello world to the website so if we just run this particular project running node.js project is very easy we just have to type node and server dot js and it's going to run this particular project and we got this message saying server started on port 3000 that's the message which we have written in this particular line and if we just go to localhost 3000 we are going to get a hello world but the thing is if we just change something in here saying i am manjunath then if i just save this particular thing we have to we are not going to get here so in order to make that work we just have to again close the server by typing control c which will exit the server and we have to again restart it so if i just go back here it will just tell hello world i am manjanath but the thing is we need to install one package in order to make sure whenever we save this particular thing it's going to restart the server again so that package name is called as npm dash npm i and in order to make it as one dev dependency meaning we don't need it in this particular project but 
we just need it during the development so we can just type it as npm dash d and we can type that package name the package name is nodemon so just click enter and it's going to install that particular dependency and we can see it in package.json saying nodemon is installed and in order to run this particular thing we can't just go here and type nodemon server.js it's not going to work because it's going to say that nodemon command not found so in order to fix that particular thing we can just go to package.json and instead of this test script we can just type it as a dev which is going to start a dev server so let's just close i mean just let's just clear out this thing and we can type nodemon server.js and now we don't need to write type anything like node server.js or nodemon server.js we can just type uh, npm run dev it's going to run that particular dev server and it's actually executing this particular command you can just see it here whenever we type at npm run dev it's going to run in nodemon server.js and these scripts are very useful if you are like actually developing a big project but even for small project is fine if you just type npm run dev whatever you type it he here same thing you have to type in npm run dev so that is going to run this particular server and now if you go back here it's going to run the dev server as usual but if i go here and change it to i am wonderful then if i just save it it's going to refresh and uh, if you just refresh here it's going to work here we didn't have to we don't have to restart the server like how we were restarting it before that's it for this video guys uh, and i'll see you in next video bye bye so in last video we have ran this particular server that is hello world project using node.js in this video we are going to get to learn more about backend development with api so without any delay let me just go to uh, one website this website is called as postman.com if you go to postman.com slash downloads you can download it for your operating system i'm on windows so it's saying windows 64 bit if you're on mac or linux it's going to have different kind of version for it so just download it once you have downloaded it install it and we'll use it in this particular project before that we need to learn something called as json so what is actually json json is something using which a backend server can communicate with the front end as well as from front end we can send json to the back end it's just nothing but one object notation which is agreed upon front end and back end in order to transfer in any kind of data i am not sure like before few years uh, people used to use something called as xml and nowadays json is like most popular language it's easily integrated with the uh, javascript uh, so we can use it uh, without any kind of problem so let's just go to our server uh, and create uh, one api route so this will be your first api route uh, so before creating api route we are going to just erase this particular line and we are going to send one json object json is very easy to understand so you are not going to face any problem we can type whatever the name which we want to give here and we can write message saying server is running that is api server is running okay if i just save this particular thing it will show up in here with little bit different notation saying message api server is running this is nothing but json so if you are able to understand this particular thing that message is this particular thing and if you are understanding this then you have understood what is json we can send any kind of number also from here saying version is one so if i just go here and if i refresh it's going to say version is one so from front end application if we just say 
message and it's going to just show api server is running and if we just ask for this version then it's just just going to say version number one that's all for this particular api but uh, the thing is in order to make sure api looks fine we need to use that particular postman application so just uh, after you download it you can open it uh, once you have opened up the postman it's going to have something like this interface so you just have to click on create tab that is plus button and you can type whatever the thing you have you will type in the browser let me just type one url here so that we can access that particular thing index route http colon slash slash local host column 3000 and if we run this particular thing it's going to display the thing is it's going to display it in like little bit better way than how it's displaying here which is very tough to understand what we are displaying so this will have little bit better interface and not just that more than interface it's we can even send json from uh, the this particular application itself if you just type uh, something here like uh, hello this is my message then this particular json is also available to send from here to the server usually it's being sent by our front-end application maybe react vue.js or uh, angular but while testing we can test it in this particular uh, software only so that we'll understand uh, it more better so that's it for this video guys uh, and in next video we are going to work with uh, the api routes so don't forget to follow me on youtube uh, and see you in the next video bye bye So now we are going to get started with the uh, working with the API routes. So let me just create one new API route. It will be get request and it's going to go for super heroes. And we are building one superhero database using REST API. That's why I'm going to call it as superheroes. You can call it anything for your project, but just uh, make sure know this particular uh, route. So I'll just create request then response then i am going to do like how i did here saying rest dot json and i'm going to send message saying showing all super heroes and if i just save it if i go to postman i can just go to super heroes and click enter it's going to show i'll just it will just show showing all superheroes and let me just create another route but this time the route will be little bit different because instead of just superheroes this time let me get a particular superhero that is whichever the superhero we are calling we can call it using some kind of id so i'll just call it as a superhero id and if i save it it's going to show exactly same thing if we go to superheroes colon slash one but uh, we need to get that particular number also so that uh, we can uh, get that particular superhero so it's very easy we just can type superhero id is and we can just add plus and we can type something different this time that is request dot params dot superhero id this superhero id came from here and request dot params means we are getting one parameter from the front end so if i now go and type here it will show superhero id is one and if i type id2 it's going to show superhero id is 2 so only these two route we are going to work with initially and we are going to create three more requests just be with me until then no? instead of get this time we are going to create post and we don't need this particular id because we are creating data so here we can just type uh, creating super hero and another 
same way we need another this thing and this time instead of post we are going to send a put in this particular put request we need actually the id like before that is super hero id because we'll have to edit one superhero that this put means editing superhero so i can just type editing superhero and same way plus request dot params dot superhero id because we need to edit one specific superhero not all of them so lastly we need to delete one superhero so we can just type app dot delete and instead of uh, we can have all these things and instead of editing i can just type deleting superhero so that's all for uh, this particular routes we are going to work with let me just increase the screen size here so that you can see everything so let me just type here the comment so that you will understand display all superheroes and here uh, display superhero using id here uh, create a new superhero and two more are there here uh, we are going to edit superhero with the id and next uh, last one we are going to type uh, delete superhero with the id and this is just welcome to welcome route that is to index welcome to index so that's all routes we are going to create in this particular project it's going to create one thread application for our project so if i just send post request to this particular thing it's going to just say creating superhero if I send a put request, then it's going to give error because there is nothing here. We need to send one number here saying superhero one. Yeah. Then last we are going to send delete request. And if we just send it, it's going to say deleting superhero one. So that's all for this video, guys. We have created one route so that we can access it. That's it for this video guys and see you in the next video. So in this video we are going to work with MongoDB. So let me just go to mongodb.com and I'll just sign in. If you have signed in that time only you can use whatever the account which you have signed in. I'm going to create new account so I'll just create it. It will ask for accept policy and all. I'll just accept it by clicking submit. Now it's going to give us this particular interface. And it's going to say create database and let me just build a database. It's absolutely free when you're just getting started. So we can use it for free. So let me close it and create one free cluster. Creating cluster is very easy. Just select whichever the location is near to you and uh, I'll click on Mumbai. Then in this particular place, uh, uh, create cluster. We can keep everything default and I'll just click uh, create cluster. It's going to take a while uh, to create it, uh, but you can set one username also. So I'll just set it as my user name and password use whatever the password you want to use i'll just use one two three four five six it's a secure password create user it's, it's saying password is too weak so i'll just add a b c d so it accepted the password and uh, everything keep default here and uh, that's all for this particular thing you can click on database here it's still creating when it's creating let me just close this out yeah so when it's creating this particular thing it might take one two minutes that time we can just go to here database access and we can just make sure my username and whatever the permission it has is given if it is not given just click on add new user and create it 
and just keep everything default and it should uh, give you access i created it when uh, the database was creating uh, so i can use same thing and then you have to go to network access uh, and here uh, we can just click on add ip address uh, and we can allow access from anywhere because we are just testing right so that's fine if we get to give access from everywhere so if i just go here it's just going to say that a database is still being created until then we can just go to our project and install some things which is required for working with the mongodb database so same way we have to install npm i and we can install something called as mongoose it's a package which is going to allow us to communicate with the mongodb easily so i just installed it let's just make sure it's installed here and i can see it's installed now usually this is how i create the database by creating one file named config and we i name it as db.js and here i'm going to import that particular file that is const mongoose is equal to require require mongoose and once it's required we can just uh, create one function here i'm going to create one asynchronous function saying const connect db is equal to async and i'll just create it so whenever we have this async function we need to put it in try catch so if any kind of error comes we can just get it so let me just type this uh, error saying error while connecting and uh, let me just append it with the error dot message so that uh, we'll get error message if any error is available so here we need to type one particular uh, line in order to connect it to the database and uh, connecting it is very easy just type await uh, mongoose dot connect and here we are going to paste something but before pasting let me just create one variable named dot db underscore uri and we need to have that particular db dot uri so here also i need to create it db dot uri is equal to something that something is there right it's going to come from uh, this particular mongodb atlas it's now created uh, the database so i uh, we can just uh, click on connect here if i just click connect here it's going to ask something i'll just click uh, connect to your application so let me just copy this particular thing and go to here and he paste it here so username is whatever the username which you have created uh, and password is uh, whatever the password you have put i think i have created i put one two three four five six a b c d and if i just save it it's going to yeah so here we need to type one database name so let me just type it as my node.js db so let me just save it and i think that's all we let put one message saying a log saying database connected let me just save it and in order to run this particular function we need to export it by typing module dot exports is equal to connect db so let me just go to this particular file and import that particular thing connect db function is equal to require config dot dot slash config slash db and if i just save it and type here connect db it's going to run that particular function here if everything goes fine then it will run the database and it will get message saying database connected yeah so if database connected is written here uh, that means uh, we are ready to uh, connect use uh, the mongodb let me just type one wrong password here so that uh, see if i type wrong password it's going to show error while connecting uh, bad auth 
authentication failed meaning your username and password is not mentioned properly or some kind of error is there when you are configuring this particular mongodb so let me just go here and type the name properly so that we can use it so that's it for this video guys and in next video we are going to work with models and we are going to get started with the superhero database creation so don't forget to subscribe to me on YouTube and uh, see you in the next video. So in last video, we have connected our project to the MongoDB properly. Now in this video, we are going to work with models. So best practice of creating model is create one folder named models. And uh, let me just create one file in this particular uh, folder saying uh, hero model dot js and in this particular hero model we are going to have hero name and name name means actual name of that superhero and hero name means it's a superhero name of that particular person for example if it is batman that is the hero name then actual name is bruce wayne so that's what we are going to build in this particular project so let me just import mongoose like how we imported there by saying const mongoose is equal to require mongoose and in this particular file we are going to create model so const hero schema is equal to mongoose dot schema so in this particular schema we are going to define blueprint of those two things which i said in the beginning of this video saying superhero name and name so superhero name is hero superhero name is going to be string so we are going to set the type as a string and next thing is uh, we are going to set the uh, name and name is also is going to be type of uh, string let me just type it properly string then name is also is going to be required so that without name they can't uh, create uh, the superhero so required uh, colon true so once we have created hero schema that is the blueprint of model we need to create model itself so we can create it by saying uh, is saying uh, export uh, ex module dot export uh, exports is equal to mongoose dot mongoose dot model and in this particular model we are going to name it uh, that is name is hero and uh, hero schema so last line denotes that uh, it's going to create model named hero and uh, it's going to use uh, this particular hero schema so once we have created the model uh, then we can uh, get started with the uh, using it in uh, our uh, server.js let me just import it const hero is equal to require dot slash model slash hero model and we can use this particular hero model in the project itself so let me just get all the heroes from the database at the moment there are no heroes but uh, creating this particular thing is easy so in order to get hero we need to use async function just think of async as something like this whenever we are communicating with one third party thing that is not this particular folder but uh, this particular mongos database so that time uh, we need to send one asynchronous request that's why we need to add a try catch here with the async here so that we can use the await function in this particular file so let me just get uh, heroes uh, is equal to hero dot find it's going to list us all the heroes which are required for us so 
let me just type here uh, res dot json uh, you can just type it as uh, heroes now it's going to give us entire heroes object itself if any error comes uh, let me just log uh, error so that we can get it now if i just go to postman uh, and uh, send one get request uh, to superheroes uh, then we might get some error also or it might work okay it gave us little bit error here so let's just fix it okay so the fix to this particular error is easy we just have to type await as i said in the beginning saying uh, it needs to have that particular uh, await functionality in order to get us the data properly so if i just run, send uh, the get request to superheroes it's going to give us one empty array if there were actually superheroes present then it's going to give us the superhero list itself so let me just uh, go ahead and uh, work with that particular uh, thing that is create new superhero so in order to create superhero we need to create some middleware here so let's just create one middleware middleware is nothing but just housekeeping stuff uh, so that uh, everything in our application works properly so in order to create middleware it's very easy app dot use and uh, express dot json so if i just type this particular thing it's going to work so in order to create new superhero we need to get that particular superhero from the front end in order to get it we need to create one function just like how we have created there so that function can be try catch it should be inside try catch and we need to put async function also here so if any error comes let me just console dot log that particular error and in the try block we are going to create superhero so await super not superhero just hero hero dot create and here uh, we need to send some things uh, that is in this particular model we have written right uh, superhero name and uh, name so superhero name is uh, we have to type uh, super hero name and did i write superhero name here yeah so in superhero name we can get it by saying request dot body dot superhero name and name also same way request dot body dot name and this much is going to create that particular superhero name request dot body dot superhero name means here in this particular body with the raw and we are going to send uh, json so in this particular place we are going to type one curly bracket and we are going to send super hero name and we are going to name it as uh, maybe iron man and actual name of that particular superhero also we have to send we'll name it as tony stark and just make sure you are going to send uh, post request uh, not anything else uh, and here let's just create one uh, one message saying rush dot json message saying superhero created so if i just save it uh, it's going to send us that particular message or it's going to give us error so let me just send it it's it's saying superhero created but how to view those how to view that superhero by just going to get request here and if i just send it it is going to display that particular superhero and it's going to give us id in mongoose and mongodb this particular id is automatically generated so that we can identify each and every document uniquely so let me just create another superhero by sending one post request and instead of iron man this time i am going to send pete parker okay that's actually superhero name and we are going to name him spider man the name is 
పిట పార్కర్ సో ఇఫ్ ఐ జస్ట్ క్లిక్ ఆన్ సెండ్ ఇట్స్ గోయింగ్ టు సే దట్ సూపర్ హీరో క్రియేటెడ్ అండ్ ఇఫ్ ఐ జస్ట్ సెండ్ గెట్ రిక్వెస్ట్ టు సూపర్ హీరోస్ ఇట్స్ గోయింగ్ టు లిస్ట్ డౌన్ టు సూపర్ హీరోస్ దట్ ఈస్ వన్ ఇస్ స్పైడర్ మ్యాన్ అండ్ అనదర్ ఇస్ ఆన్ మ్యాన్ విత్ దేర్ యాక్చువల్ నేమ్స్ so now let's just try to get uh, one single super hero using uh, this particular id so that we are going to get just spider man at the moment if i just send it it's going to show that uh, super hero id is uh, this particular id but we actually need to get uh, properly with the uh, whoever the hero name is so same way async function we have to create uh, and we have to type a try catch and in this particular catch we are going to just type a long and we are going to type it as error so that whatever the error comes we can see it and in try we need to get a single super hero this time so we are going to get that super hero hero const hero is equal to hero that is our model dot find but this time in this particular thing uh, we have to type it as find by id so that hero dot find by id it is going to give us uh, if we just send id here id is coming from here and that can be accessed by saying request dot uh, that is here this request is there right, from front end uh, that request uh, dot uh, not body params dot superhero id and this particular thing needs to await just like uh, here we have written await and uh, we are going to res dot json hero itself so if i now go here and if i send it uh, it's going to give me spider man so next we are going to work with the editing super hero it's also same thing it's like uh, it's also very easy let me just create it here as always async function and try catch programming is almost very easy when you are like uh, understand like how does all this particular thing works so once you are familiar with it you are going to build amazing applications so console dot log error and in this particular thing we need to get the superhero id as well as update it so doing that is easy we just need to await just like how we create here yeah same way instead of creating we can just type hero dot find by id and update just type it properly find by id and update and we need to send one id here id can be coming from request dot params dot superhero id and whatever the thing which we need to edit we can edit it by exactly like how it's written here superhero name and this thing we need to just make sure that we send both of these things so that uh, it name it remembers it properly so if i just send put request uh, and instead of spider man i'll just uh, type uh, spider man uh, edited and instead of peter parker i'll just send it as uh, peter parker uh, renamed i'll just uh, send one put request here if i send it uh, it's not going to show anything because i didn't send one message here saying uh, rush dot json message hero is updated if i just save it now if i send it again it's going to say that hero is updated how do you know how do we know that hero is actually updated we can send one get request to this particular thing and it's going to say spider man edited and name is peter parker renamed so we have created editing also now one last thing that is deleting this particular thing so deleting it also is very easy 
we just have to send one uh, create one asynchronous function like how we created before and uh, try catch Cre creating it again and again is going to improve your uh, programming skills so don't be afraid to create it again and again or feel like ha huh, it's very lazy why should i create it creating again and again is only is going to improve your mind with the programming so let me just log error and here also same thing it's like uh, await find model name we have to type that is hero dot find by id and delete so we just need to send id id will come from request dot params dot superhero id and once it's sent we can just type res dot json with the message saying superhero deleted so if i just save it it's not going to work because yeah so now it's going to work so let me just go to another tab and uh, let me just uh, list down superheroes http colon slash slash local host colon 3000 and if i just enter it's saying api server is running but we need to go to superheroes and in this particular file also it's saying spiderman is edited and uh, let me just uh, now delete uh, tony stark because he died in last movie right not because of that we want to learn how does deleting work so delete request we have to send with the iron man's id so let me just remove this particular id and paste iron man's id let's just make sure it's iron man's 9271 last number here also 9271 last number if I just send it, it's going to say that superhero deleted. And now if I try to access uh, this particular thing, it's saying Spider-Man edited and uh, Peter Park renamed. There is no Iron Man in it because we just deleted the Iron Man. So that's it for this particular project, guys. And we just created one uh, CRUD. So now you can connect this particular thing with the whatever the front end application you are uh, creating using react uh, no react angular uh, or uh, vue.js or any kind of android app also works with this so that's it for this video guys if you like this series uh, then uh, don't forget to subscribe me in youtube and uh, see you in some other video another time bye bye